Take a look at this timeline that I've been working on. This is a pivotal moment before the dot-com bubble. It's not the invention of the internet, but the tool that put it in everyone's hands. In the following years, billions of dollars were poured into hundreds of companies that would transform the world where we live in today. But that decade ended with a bang. Or rather, with a pop. 30 years later, there is another timeline with crazy similarities. And we can line them up around another event. Chat GPT. GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. GPT4 is here and it's literally writing me the entire song. Let's see what this song sounds like. Wow. It's so smart. How about we talk about recent advancements in artificial intelligence? Absolutely. Artificial intelligence is indeed a fascinating topic. We had been toying with the idea of AI for a while, but the release of Chat GPT suddenly put it into everyone's hands. It made the average person understand how transformative AI could be, and it kick-started another chain of events. It appears that the website has become alive. There are too many parallels and coincidences between these two, and understanding those similarities is, I think, the key to figuring out if this one is headed into another implosion. Those two events are not the origin, but the trigger that put these technologies in the hands of millions. We could say that the true origin of the internet as we know it today happened in CERN. You know, those guys with the Large Hadron Collider. And the World Wide Web, the internet, was a bit of a passion project, you know, like to get these scientists to socialize between them and get into their own little chat rooms. It passes through every conceivable point in every conceivable universe almost simultaneously. But it was also the culmination of years of research around protocols and the technologies needed to make computers talk to each other. But that CERN breakthrough was the first glance that people got at the potential for what the internet could mean for the world. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to be beaten by a website. I'm sure that in 1989, the average Joe didn't hear about this or understand what it meant, but those who paid attention started building the first websites and the first web tools. Quite similarly, we had been theorizing about AI for decades, and other key scientific breakthroughs helped make it happen. So there isn't a key AI invention event moment, but if we had to pick one, it'd be AlexNet. AlexNet is profound in that way. You know, not only was it a, a giant breakthrough in computer vision, it was also a profoundly new way of doing software. Some people call it software 2.0. Because you see, in 2010, AA Geek started running this little competition called the Eelsverk, the ImageNet Large-Scale Visual Recognition Challenge. The idea is that teams submit different software programs that compete and try to classify and detect objects and images. Dog, pig, dog, pig, dog. Loaf of bread. System error. And each year's winner is the program that does better at recognizing these images, or technically the program that screws up the least. Not hot dog. Wait, what the fuck? Now in 2012, AlexNet absolutely crushed the competition, and it did so with a novel approach to neural networks and deep learning. We made a whole video, like last week, about how some of those neural networks work. That's not today's topic, so I'll just keep it simple. Among other breakthroughs, the team figured that it'd be much more efficient to use GPUs instead of CPUs to do all these calculations. So they managed to run their piece of software on just two NVIDIA GTX 580 video cards versus the huge server processor heavy data rooms that the competition had to use. In 2012, Nvidia stock was about 35 cents a share. This paper was the trigger that would then turn Nvidia into a trillion dollar company, scaling their share price by 400 times, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now Google acquired the company, the founders worked there for a while, one kind of got bored, and the other joined a few other nerds to start a non-profit organization called OpenAI. Now, both of those events, the World Wide Web and AlexNet, are key not because of the attention that they received at the time, but because they triggered hundreds of scientists, entrepreneurs, engineers to begin developing applications on top of these breakthroughs. We've seen billions of dollars thrown at these companies, which is why we're here in a way. But there's also been a rise of solopreneurs and small teams leveraging these models and their APIs to build simple solutions for everyday problems for people or for other small businesses. I've been working with HubSpot on a few video collaborations and I convinced them to give you guys free access to their side hustle database. So they put together this list of 100 company ideas along with the skills that you need to build each one of those companies. But my favorite feature is that you can filter them by the amount of investment needed to get either idea off the ground. I've put a link in the description for you guys to download or you can just snap this QR code here. And if you're looking to dip your toes, you can just pick one of those 100 to 500 dollar side hustle ideas that fits your skills, the stuff that you already have, and begin building. 
Again, it's completely free and it's a flexible Google Doc. You can download it, you can store it, you can edit it and reference it later. You don't need to raise or burn through millions of dollars like these companies did to start a business that leverages technology or the internet or AI. This is one of the Hustle's most valuable and most popular resources. We've been collaborating with them for a couple of years now and they of course helped fund the production of this video. But let's go back to those mass adoption moments when Mosaic, which eventually turned into Netscape, from the moment when the browser was released, it took about six years for the first 100 million people to get online. Now, getting online back then wasn't just about signing up or downloading an app. Only about 20% of US households even had a computer at that point. And getting online meant spending hundreds or thousands of dollars into your first computer. Riding on the internet, cyberspace, virtual reality. On the other hand, it would take ChatGPT just two months to reach the same 100 million users. This beat the previous record holder, TikTok's nine months, to become the fastest user adoption in history. But more than triggering user adoption, what both of these moments did was trigger greed. Internet stocks drove a powerful surge on Wall Street today. Dot com shot up today. We're on track, it looks like, to hit a billion shares. AOL, today. Yahoo, Amazon. Of course, has really created a very strong brand. Now, this is the NASDAQ index from the release of Mosaic in September 1993 to the Netscape IPO on August 9th, 1995. At the time, being profitable was this unwritten requirement to go public, but this company was only a couple of years old, absolutely not profitable, and now getting ready to go public? Why? Like, how do you justify this? Well, their revenue had doubled every quarter and they were riding high. No one had ever seen anything like that. Plans were set to IPO at $14 per share, but there was a lot of hype around this IPO, so they shifted that last minute to $28 a share. And the gamble paid off. They closed that first day at $58 a share, valuing the company at $2.9 billion. It's the kind of Hollywood of the 20s, a year ago, this place didn't exist. Today, it's the fastest growing firm in the digital world. How much of that valuation was real value that this company could extract for investors? How much of that was just based on revenues or the company's potential? And how much of that was speculation? The excitement created by Netscape and other tech companies going public over the next few years made the index double over the next three years from $1,000 to $2,000 at the end of 1998. Now, a key contributing factor was that there was a lot of money in the market in the 90s, in part because a few years earlier, Americans were given the opportunity to invest tax-free dollars into the stock market through their retirement funds, their 401ks. If you're outside the US, 401k is the US pension system, essentially. But 401k made the amount of people that invested in the stock market jump from 25% in the 80s to 50% at the end of the 90s, more than any other major economy in the world. And add to that this new wave of tech companies that were building the future. For retail investors and for a fair share of professional investors too, it mattered little if they understood the underlying technology or not. It was all about the hype and the hype was real. 20 plus companies IPO'd during these next three years and speculation around those companies was all part of the fuel. Now, most of these companies were not profitable. They had not proved their business model, but they were tech companies. They were dot-com companies. So they could potentially be another Netscape. Just slap dot-com into anything. Now, let's see how that played in the other timeline. This is the release of ChatGPT against the NASDAQ index. There was a lot of money flowing in the market because the US had basically printed trillions of dollars a few months back as part of their COVID stimulus checks. Now at this point, 60% of Americans were invested in the stock market. And two years later, the NASDAQ is once again at double its value. Barnacles, what could be worse than a giant paint bubble? Oh, I know. <laughs> Two giant paint bubbles. But it's very different from the first time. There have only been a handful of AI companies going public, doing IPOs in that time frame. While AI is key to market growth, a good chunk of the money that's been invested into the AI buzz has been invested via private venture capital deals. Venture capital as we know it today with hundreds of VCs, angel investors putting money into startups directly and privately, that didn't exist in the 90s. Truly, the IPO madness post Netscape was fueled in part because there was nowhere else for these companies to raise money from. So they had to go public. And that sucks because you do end up with retail investors, unexperienced investors, 
fueling risky business expenses on profitable companies that they don't understand. My wife might divorce me, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so why the crazy growth in today's stock market? A huge portion of that is the so-called Magnificent Seven. Apple, Microsoft, Google, aka Alphabet, Amazon, Nvidia, Meta, aka Facebook, and Tesla, which have now all added some form of AI to their value propositions. Those are the companies fueling the hype by all means. Their valuation was decoupled from their earnings and from the other non-tech stocks. Now, if we establish the release of ChatGPT as the equivalent revelation about AI and what it could mean for the world, let's look at how these companies performed since then. Tesla is up 85%, though their AI self-driving proposal predates GPT, and there are other reasons why Tesla is booming in the stock market. Next two years. Google slash Alphabet is also around 85% growth. Even though they have a ton of R&D dedicated to generative AI, their search business is also being threatened for the first time, well, since ever. Apple is up 65%, despite Apple intelligence being completely useless. Microsoft is up 65%. They do own like 49% of OpenAI, which explains that. Meta is up 615%. They have some AI, but it's mostly that they've just run the company very profitably with their ad business lately. And then NVIDIA, NVIDIA is up 835% since ChatGPT released. The match between these two things is almost too obvious, but what comes next is really the worrisome part. In 1999, in just one year, the Nasdaq index grew another 100%. It doubled from 2000 to $4,600 at the beginning of the year 2000. But the scary part is why. In 1999, we entered this era of going public with practically no revenue. Etoys, pets.com, theglobe.com, Webvan, they all IPO'd, their valuation skyrocketed sometimes six times their initial share price. And you also had all these other companies with growing valuations just for adding a .com to their name. Like MIS International renamed to Cosmos.com and so their shares spike 900%. No change in what they did, literally just a name change. This other company, Professional Recovery Systems, went from penny stock to $9 a share in the early 2000s, a 1600% gain just because they added .com to their names. Does this ring a bell to you? ClickUp AI Note Taker is different. Sana AI has joined the team. AI Optimized has elements of both. Today, we're introducing Notion AI. Slack AI comes in. Introducing conversational AI with 11 The new AI-powered search engine by Artlist. I'm not done though, there is that matter of funding. Like most estimates agree that over $200 billion in venture capital has been poured into startups, tech companies, building AI tools, including a $1 billion seed round for a company that literally just had this landing page. Fair, these are some big name founders, but a billion dollar seed round? I think we are in a bubble, but I think bubbles have different shapes. There's a Mark Twain quote that history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. It's like poetry, so if they rhyme, Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Again, a big difference between these two timelines is where this capital is coming from. Contrary to 1999, it's private investors this time, not individuals that are funding these unprofitable startups. But in part, thanks to that, retail investor bets are being placed in the stock market through any company that mentions something remotely around AI. So what happens if those bets don't pay off? What happens if the $340 billion that big tech has spent to build up these technologies what if it doesn't pay off? Could a market correction of the Magnificent Seven to bring down the rest of the market? We're pleased to have all of you here with us today as we announce the merger to create the first global media and communications company of the internet century, AOL Time Warner. This was by far one of the largest corporate mergers in history, a $180 billion deal designed to bring this massive dinosaur of traditional media into the new world to the internet, and AOL, who was the poster child of this internet hype, was merging with this century-old media empire. We know instinctively that there is a natural fit between these two companies. And the idea was simple. If you merge AOL's internet reach with Time Warner's vast content empire, you get something that's more valuable than the sum of the two. But the reality was a disaster. AOL was drastically overvalued, merging an innovative but chaotic internet culture with traditional corporate America just didn't work out. The merger became a cautionary tale symbolizing the excess of the dot-com bubble. Now fast forward to today, and you can't help but notice how Microsoft's massive investment into OpenAI echoes this story a little bit. Microsoft is to boost its investment in chat GPT maker OpenAI. They've put a billion dollars in in the past, but $10 billion getting that kind of evaluation. Tech giants betting billions of dollars on a revolutionary technology to enhance and integrate deeply into all of their products. 
While Microsoft hasn't officially acquired OpenAI, thanks in part to the fact that they have this nonprofit origin mess, this partnership has a lot of similar dynamics. Microsoft has already poured billions of dollars into OpenAI, betting heavily on this generative AI revolution to transform their own business, much like AOL was betting on merging tech with content. Now, massive differences in thinking were evident, for example, in 2024, when the OpenAI board fired the CEO, Sam Altman, for rushing into AI breakthroughs without any guardrails. And still, he got rehired the next day after the company's big benefactor stepped in. Now, Microsoft might be the dinosaur here, and OpenAI, the hot startup. And while there are plenty of legal hoops that they have to jump to eventually fully control OpenAI, they do already own 49% of the company. They effectively control a lot of what they do. But what happens if AI doesn't deliver? the transformation that everyone's expecting, or at least not soon enough. Could Microsoft's massive investment in OpenAI turn into some AOL-sized regret? I think we're still yet to see if Microsoft delivers on the promises of Copilot and if they can bring it home. I believe with the benefit of hindsight, most of the excess of the dot-com bubble might have been justified. I think that doesn't mean that the excitement around the impact of the internet on the economy was false. We will look back and laugh at some of the excess, but I'm confident we will have a brand defining, likely trillion dollar consumer company come out of this. Now today, today, I think AI has failed to transform our lives or make the amount of money that speculators seem to predict that it can. But just like dot-com companies in the 2000s, the technology did end up transforming the world after some madness and speculation. I mean, look where we are. Maybe the problem is not the technology, but the speculation. This urgency to make money now by pretending these companies are something that they're not. But that is a video for another day, like literally our video from last week, which you should go check out. We'll catch you in the next one.